Hi everybody, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this quick video, we're gonna get back to basics and we're talking about camera basics, specifically with a DSLR. And um, most of this still applies to a mirrorless camera. So if you switch to a mirrorless camera, uh, all should still apply. Things might be in a slightly different place, but let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. For a photo booth, we're gonna talk about, we're not gonna go over everything in the camera, just some of the things that are important to a photo booth. So we have our shutter release button. We're not using that, but it's a good, good idea to know where it is. That's what takes the picture. And then on this camera, we have the exposure mode selection dial or wheel. And that's where we had set our exposure mode. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. And then right here, we have the camera hot shoe. This is where we're gonna connect our hot shoe adapter for a studio flash, or if we're using an on-camera flash, we'd connect it there. And then we have right here, the autofocus manual focus selection or switch. And there's another switch right here and uh, I'll show you on my camera in just a second what that does and what it's for. So let's go ahead and um, switch to a overhead view so we can see this camera. We have the shutter button. Here's the lens, the camera body, the exposure selection, um, exposure mode selection wheel or dial is on the left side on my camera or on this camera but for you it might be on the right side so that might be a little bit different um, and right here it's selected on manual I can switch it over to program if I want those are the two modes that we would suggest using with darkroom booth I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to manual and then um, we have the hot shoe adapter and right here you can see that there's a center pin some uh, cameras actually don't come with that um, so you would need a um, hot shoe adapter specifically for for that camera from the manufacturer um, but that center pin is kind of helpful that allows you to use other equipment so and then right here we have autofocus and manual focus and that is different from manual mode so it's important to know these two are very different this one handles the focusing system this one handles the exposure mode and then we have this little switch for image stabilization and that handles some stabilization whenever you're hand holding the camera but because it's on a, a photo booth it's typically mounted so for the image stabilization you don't need to have that on uh, you can switch it off but that is different from the autofocus and manual focus option. Okay. So when using darkroom booth, you will want to either set it to program or manual for the exposure. If you're using constant light or the light available light program will work. It does a pretty good job. It's important to learn your manual settings. If you're using a studio strobe, then you definitely want to use manual um, because your camera doesn't know that, that flash is going to fire how much light is coming from it so you have to set the camera um, ahead of time to match that lighting so we're going to get into the exposure triangle and how these three different options work together and against each other and uh, using your aperture your ISO or ISO and the your shutter speed uh, that's how you would mix these three options together to get a properly exposed image and I'll have a little cheat sheet in just a little bit that says uh, a good starting point but let's first look at the aperture and kind of what it does so there's a little ring inside of the lens that opens and closes allowing more or less light in and it's inverse um, value so it's because it's a fraction as the number is smaller the hole is getting bigger so an f 1.4 aperture is wide open versus f16 is closed down to a small hole and the reasons why you would want those is in this image we have kind of more of a portrait style where we have a shallow depth of field and you can see um, his shoulders kind of out of starting to get out of focus his eyes are in focus but around the hair it's out of focus the background is completely blurry so for a portrait f 2.8 2 or 
um, that is appropriate but in a photo booth environment you want typically want to have more depth of field and that is the amount of space from the lens that is in focus so typically with a photo booth you're going to be working in around f8 maybe 5.6 you can see in this example that we have the subjects in focus, the backgrounds in focus. It's got a few feet of um, focus. And then let's say you're shooting landscape. You want the foreground in focus, everything 100 feet, 200 feet, you know, half a mile, two miles down. You want it all to be in focus. So uh, in this in instance, F11 was used, but you would have a smaller um, aperture and that keeps everything just a little bit more in focus and we have an example of a shallow depth of field and if you uh, are using your photo booth and you capture an image like this where one person's in focus but somebody maybe a foot behind them is out of focus look at that uh, aperture value let's switch back to this slide um, if you're on f4, maybe go to uh, 5.6 or 8, um, and that should help make make it so everybody, the whole group, is in focus. Okay. So next is the shutter speed, and you have a, a shutter inside your camera, and it opens and then it closes, and uh, that's what exposes a sensor or when we used film expose the film the um, flash sync speed is the fastest um, shutter that your you, shutter setting that you can have where the um, back curtain the secondary curtain doesn't start closing before the first shutter curtain is fully open so if you see um, it's kind of hard to explain, but if you see a black line, that means that you're probably uh, set to a faster shutter speed than your camera's sync speed. Um, so, one one twenty fifth of a second is a good place to start. Uh, really, it, it, if you leave it one one twenty fifth of a second with a studio strobe, you should be fine. Um, some cameras have to have a faster sync speed. Um, the difference here is not gonna it's not too important so I typically say 1 25th of a second you can refer to your camera manufacturer or the the manual and see um, what the sync speed is but you should be safe with 1 25th of a second and here is an example of a slow shutter and um, how to notice it if you see the background is in focus but the subjects are moving around that's a slow shutter it has nothing to do with the focusing because an object is, that is not moving is in focus so in that case you'd want to check your shutter speed make sure it's fast enough that it's not too slow um, typically you want to keep it above a 50th of a second but studio strobes just stick with 125th and you'll be fine and the reason why we have that option is so we can capture um, uh, longer exposures like fireworks if this was a fast shutter speed there'd just be dots so this was probably a two second exposure with this fireworks image um, also if you want to play around with light painting that's where you shouldn't uh, take a picture and somebody is moving lights and has a whole bunch of different colors and light trails that would be where you would use a slow shutter and uh, it'll get the light trails and the flash would illuminate the subject um, but that is uh, your shutter speed. And then we get to the ISO or ISO. Um, both are correct. The Whenever you're using a studio strobe, you're typically going to be using 100 uh, or 200. Some cameras will have 50. I typically suggest staying with 100. Um, if you are not using the a strobe and you just kind of the camera is just using available light that's where you would use 1600 or 32 um, if just in photography for a bright day you're typically right around here if you remember disposable cameras they had a 800 um, ISO 
and if you're shooting let's say astro photography night photography this is where you use this high ISOs um, I want to show you an example of a high ISO this is uh, at night and you can see that uh, we're introducing a little bit of noise um, with film it would have been grain but in order to get those uh, that that sensor a little bit more sensitive um, we have to it causes grain so that's just an example of a high ISO image and one of the things we try to avoid if possible and this is kind of my cheat sheet for um, a photo booth using a strobe or flash f8 um, that'll give us nice depth of field 1 1 25th of a second that'll keep us um, below our sync speed and uh, ISO of 100 if you notice it's a little dark raise the ISO or maybe raise the flash power if it's a little bit too bright um, then the first thing I do is um, uh, lower the flash power if possible but you can also raise the f-stop and it'll still give you a, a good depth of field so f11 um, but those are the two options that you have for each whether it's too bright or too dark okay now we're getting into the white balance and this is the quality of the image so your white balance is uh, based off the Calvin scale uh, knowing these numbers is not too important, but that is the, the color temperature that we're talking about. Um, typically, you're going to use flash uh, with a strobe. Um, auto, I'll show you in just a, uh, a minute why auto is not the best option most of the time. But um, it, what happens, it, it adjusts the, the color temperature. So if I were shooting... Um, at dusk or dawn during golden hour uh, the light is typically a little bit warmer so we're compensating so this is a improperly white balanced image but if it, the light was a warmer light then this would look better so that's why you have this option and you can see if our um, this one is I think it's set to shade you can see it's a little bit warmer than it should be so next slide we're going to uh, look at what auto would actually do um, the camera is doing its best in understanding the color it blends everything in kind of turns it gray so in this image because it was a pink background and she has pink skin tones it kind of shifts everything towards blue and it comes out with this purplish color so this is where auto is not really successful it works pretty good most of the time but it's better to set it to flash um, because that is the actual color temperature of that flash or close and you can see that it's close but um, custom using a custom value is even more correct so this would be 5500k and this image actually is at uh, 4800k so I get a little bit better skin tone so flash is good but using custom you can get even better here are those uh, same settings in darkroom um, it's the same settings there on the camera but we have it and we're able to control it from darkroom so we don't have to get in and change those settings on uh, physically on the camera we have our exposure mode um, now this one has to be set oops this one has to be set on the camera but we can adjust the aperture value and it's AV here but um, that's also uh, so that's what that stands for also goes by f-stop um, here's the shutter speed and that's time value that's where the TV comes from but that's your shutter speed and then here's our ISO image quality is set to JPEG you don't want to use uh, raw images with darkroom booth it'll cause some problems so avoid that and then right here we have our white balance settings we can see that it's set to flash um, and then there are a few other options these are get a little bit more uh, into color quality um, but for the most part leaving it on portrait and srgb is a good idea and then we have um, some settings for our live view and video that you can also adjust so let's say you're doing video and stills you can have different um, values for the video 
um, and then which are typically using a constant light uh, versus um, the flash is going to be used with stills so that's why those options are there and you're able to change them independently okay so we're going to talk about the focusing system i think this is uh the end of the presentation but let's look at this camera again so we have autofocus right here once again it's different from manual or we have manual focus autofocus that's different from the manual exposure mode one controls the focusing system one controls the exposure mode um, but if you're running into an issue you can see my camera's on and I'm trying to take a picture but it cannot focus and the reason for that is it's uh, the tables within the minimum, minimum focusing distance even though I took it outside of that minimum focusing distance it wouldn't be able to focus because there's nothing to focus on this is all white so there's no contrast for the camera to see so if you run into an issue where it says retaking to make sure it's not a focusing issue switch to manual focus and if it captures um, from the photo booth then you know it's a focusing issue and then you can deal with that um, but at least you know what the issue is it's not a camera connection issue so anytime I uh, have somebody say I'm getting retaking I always say switch to manual focus and just to verify that that's not the issue if it captures then what you want to do is you can switch back to autofocus and add more light so the camera is able to focus because it has to focus before it can actually capture the image so that's important um, make sure the camera is able to focus adding more light will make it easier you're still running into issues um, what you can do is pre-focus at a distance and set the camera to manual focus so that it's focused at the distance where your subjects are going to be inside the booth the distance from the camera so you'll be have a uh, let's say five feet from the lens and then another five feet from there so you have a good depth of field that's a way that you can get around let's say if you're at a, a dance and there's not enough available light um, you can use manual focus it'll still capture and then the flash will light everything and expose it properly and that is our camera basics um, just for fun let me know what cameras you're shooting it'll help other users know that the, the cameras that our photo booth customers are using and help them may, maybe make a decision we also have a list of the supported cameras at darkroomsupport.com um, and once again there are a few that you might want to look out for uh, the that might not have that center point for the hot shoe um, that would limit some of the devices that you can use this uh, sync uh, cyber sync um, wireless transmitter uses center point so on this camera I'm able to use it if I didn't have that center point then I wouldn't be able to use a device like that or let's say you have a hot shoe adapter connected to a sync cable so check out that list uh, to make sure the next camera you're purchasing is gonna work well with darkroom booth um, but yeah leave a comment below saying the camera you use and other people go through and say oh that's uh i see a lot of people are using let's say the r100 currently i'm uh, recording on r50 which i would not recommend because it does not have that center point it's a good camera but uh it limits your ability to use devices like um, this i would need a hot shoe adapter from canon so thank you so much for watching hopefully this has been helpful let me know what you want to uh see in the next back to basics video i think the next on my list is lighting uh, and we'll also have templates coming uh, soon so thank you for watching i'll see you next time